You're listening to Super Power Up with multidimensional master, superpower expert, and former counterintelligence agent, Tonya Don Reckla. If you're ready to disrupt reality, then sit down, strap in, and prepare to experience the show that proves there is no spoon. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, your superpower expert, and I'm excited, folks. First of all, I just want to talk about my sultry uh, post-plague voice that I have going on here. So we, uh, so if I, if, if you hear silence for a moment, it's because I'm hacking and coughing over here. But I was not missing this opportunity to connect with uh, this amazing, amazing woman that I'm going to share with you in a moment. Of course, you all know who it is because you've read the title. But anyway, we're going to pretend that this is a suspense. Um, so, but the reason I'm so excited about having her back on is that she was one of the first guests that we had on this show back in the day. It was around 2016. And we brought her on to talk about supernatural powers and everything else. And today we're actually talking about living with supernatural powers. And the reason, I mean, if you if you've known me for more than half a heartbeat, you know that I am a staunch, staunch proponent of dealing with supernatural, superpower abilities, all that fun stuff with, with a degree of responsibility. And if we don't, then I predict, as and it's not really that far of a stretch, that that we destroy things and we destroy ourselves and uh, those around us. And a lot of us have experience doing that. And so we're a little bit cautious when it comes to talking to people and helping people harness these or even encouraging them to, right? So as superpower experts, that's why we train people in very foundational principles before we ever, ever entertain the idea of helping them hone their abilities. It's just not a good idea. And so without that, right, what are we talking about about foundational abilities? What are we talking about living it? What are we talking about in terms of responsibility and accountability and transparency with all of this stuff? And so that's the conversation we're going to be having today with Danielle Agnew, who is just lovely. She's very delightful, super yummy, and you're going to adore her. If you haven't heard her episode, we're going to link it. So make sure you go to the episode page and listen to the very first episode we did together. Um, but she's the real deal, folks. Like this is this is a significant um, situation here where we have someone paving the way and 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 laying down um, paving stones, if you will, stepping stones for others to follow about what it what it is to be completely open and out there about. Um, kind of being a vessel, you know, do what, what I call, you know, you, your marching orders, you know, following those marching orders, um, really being disciplined and in obedience around um, our work with the divine. And, and I know that grates on so many of us, right? Obedience and discipline. Like I was a soldier. I get it. Like I'm no longer a soldier. There's a reason for that, but it, it, it there's still a discipline to it. There's still an obedience and, and it's not, punishment that's going to happen if you don't follow orders. It is the consequences of not following orders and the kind of world that we continue to self-replicate over and over and over again, like our own little personal prisons and tortures if we don't, right? And so it's not punishment. It just can't be any other way, right? If you choose to wallow in low frequency, you're going to experience low frequency things, which is not altogether pleasant for a lot of us. But if you choose to raise yourself to a higher frequency and and be obedient and, and have responsibility to that, you get a pretty miraculous existence. And so there, there are benefits, trust me. Um, and we're going to talk with Danielle about that because she eats, breathes, and sleeps this, right? In so many capacities. And when I say she's the real deal, folks, I'm talking about named psychic of the year, right? She's worked on supernatural. She does cold cases for the FBI, like DC's Man of Steel. Like, don't, this is not something to be disregarded as fluffiness. She lives, breathes, and sleeps, and has proven that you cannot just build an existence around it, but you can have an impact doing it, and and dare I say, you're obligated to. Um, and so we're going to bring her on to discuss what that looks like, what it looks like living with supernatural powers, and you get a taste of just her magic and her brilliance and, and a real appreciation for everyone that's paving the way in these areas, and um, she is no exception, folks. So please join me in welcoming back to the show. Danielle Agnew. Welcome, my love. Oh, thank you, gal. It is so fun to be back here. And I just bless you for your kind words and bless you for the space you <laughs> hold. Oh, really? You know, you hold this space so we get a, we get a chance to talk about these things and, and show folks where their ultimate miracle potential is. And it's just awesome. So it's wonderful to be back. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, like, like, like attracts like, and, and you boys, uh, 
had a special place in our hearts here. And, and um, you know, we're just happy to be able to shed some light on all the amazing things that you're doing. But before we jump into our conversation, I want to share your latest project with everybody. So let's talk Woo-hoo. about the Road Angel. Yay! Oh my gosh, the Road Angel. So the Road Angel is a television show that I am beyond blessed to be part of. And from a technical standpoint, it's a TV show about quote what it's about me, I guess, or what I do. However, that's not exactly how I look at it. I look at it as a television show that follows the work that comes through me or the or the purpose or the application of myself that comes through me. And we get to see, as I am an angel translator, we get to see how these angelic messages and these higher frequency messages affect people individually for amazing outcomes in their life, uh, affect amazing situations in towns. And so the Road Angel, is a, it basically follows me around. It's a bunch of camera folks and an incredible production crew who follow <laughs> me around to different places that I am literally directed by the angelic realm to go to, to assist. So mm. it's, it's really, an intri- it's a docu-series. It's not reality TV. It's a docu-series. And it is a phenomenal opportunity to be able to show anyone who watches the unbelievable potential we have, as you were saying earlier in your intro, when we just kind of get out of the way and mm-hmm. let our function happen in the matrix that we live in. And just one person makes a phenomenal difference. And that's what I love about this show is it has the opportunity to show everybody, not just me, I'm kind of the catalyst that everybody's following around here, yet it, it's an opportunity that you were talking about where we get a chance to see that we have phenomenal potential to change mm. everything. And I, I love that about this show. Well, and somebody has to wear the meat suit, right? Right. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Well, yeah. and it's like so far we don't we don't have the technology yet where we can just film spirit essence like doing their thing. So, you know, we, we got to put on a show a little bit. But what I love about what you talked about was a very casual and um, – yeah, I'm going to say humble, but but not in the gross sense of like you just saying like, and, and I am an angel translator. Like, like what I love about it is that it is what you do. It is a function that you serve, but it's not all of who you are. And I, in you know, again, folks, if you've listened to the show for more than half a second, you know that one of my soapboxes is this kind of idea of where we started confusing personal development with spiritual growth and the I am concepts. And when you know who you are, when you can wake up every morning and remember yourself as an aspect of the divine here in the physical reality, then it's like you win, like get on with your work, right? There's one more spiritual growth do you need, right? But there's, but then we get into this like, well, who's more enlightened and who's more tapped in and who's more of this and who's more of that and everything. And sure, there's training, absolutely hone your gifts, use them responsibly, make sure you have accountability, make sure that you're bouncing them off of somebody, make sure you've got safe containers to lose your crap in when, when, when you're a little overwhelmed with the fact that you've got every Tom, Dick and Harry from the universe trying to talk to you, you know, or appearing <laughs> to you or whatever's going on, you know? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Like make sure that you're being responsible in this manner. And at the same time, it doesn't change who we know ourselves to be. Right. And there's an right. art to being able to hold those seemingly contradictory spaces, but that's the multidimensional experience, right? So I love the really casual way that you mentioned that. And it's significant, right? You, you couldn't roll that off the tongue. In fact, you confessed that to me in our first interview, right? It's, it's, it was harder to come out as a psychic than as a lesbian. Like, like there's a real like gut-wrenching friction, like, oh my gosh, am I going to do this thing? Every single layer of these journeys, folks, it, every moment has to be courageous. Every moment is a choice. Are you going to slip into those old programs and what you think is um, not possible? Or oh, are you going to be an inquiry? You that, know? No, that's, that's a choice. That is a thing. And you know what's so funny that just came to me when you were speaking is that... It, it was a rant. You can, you can say it. It's okay. You don't no. Have to it. I was ranting. <laughs> no, it was great. It was like a channeled on point important thing for people to hear. Because the bottom line is you're right. You know, I'm a... 
doing this work, being an angelic translator, uh, you know, I do get the angel channel, as it were, in my etheric spheres. And, and I translate for lots of different beings, you know. I was going to say, that's not all you get, right? Like, you're, you're, it, yeah. you're a multifaceted receiver there. Well, and it's, you know, it's like a radio dial. You just, angels come in on a specific frequency and you dial it down if you want to talk to humans that are out of their body. Or you dial it down to talk to off-worlders or up, depending on the off-worlders. Or you talk to elementals or or you talk to the energy on a fork that was left at a crime scene. I translate, <laughs> oh, it's a thing. I mean, I translate these energies and that is a significant, oh. that's what I am. And I'm also a musician and I'm also a wife and I'm also, you know, I love to, I, physics are a hobby of mine. I oil paint. I mean, we're all just these multi triple beings. And one of my most profound moments, I guess, was realizing that, you know, I, I was a signed musician. Uh, and isn't it funny how we use the terms I was a, because that's what yeah. we, we think in those terms, right? From the yep. old world. However, for the, <laughs> the old just, world. oh, I hear from all the time, these angels go on and on in a freaking mantra day in and day out. You know, the old world has basically dissolved. The great mother has arisen. I'm like, you guys, this is a bit, wow. You're so like, look it, around. We still have McDonald's. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm glad y'all are rotating so fast forward while we're cleaning up on aisle nine. But thank you for that. Why so did it, you agree to this again? Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, and it just, it, it brings up the subject of, you know, when I was, I was a signed musician that my job was literally rock star forever and when I was asked to come forward with these gifts which I had the whole time I just felt mm -hmm. like I couldn't let people know that thus the comment it was easier to come out as a lesbian in music in 1991 than it was to say oh I hear things and see things and yet it's it's like you said there comes a time where we have to decide are we going to keep lying to ourselves and lie into the world about what we are or are we going to come out and say, it's okay that you're many things. That is the gift. That is the miracle. That is the blessing. Now go light them all on fire. Yep. And that was the message that I personally received. And here we are many years later, 15 years <laughs> later, and we're on TV with road angels. So it's, and we it's can an interesting laugh about journey. it. And oh, yeah, well, and you, you know, you know, my story again with the, the soldier counter. I mean, I, I awakened as an agent. It was like, uh, uh, like, <laughs> You know, yeah, around, yeah. Like, you've got to be joking here. Like, there's this is somebody's really sick and twisted, funny, haha -ha joke here. But you know, it is what it is, and we survive. Um, we're gonna take a quick break because you know that's what we do here in the physical reality. Because we have sponsors and advertisers, and then that's what we do. But um, before we break, one, where do we want to go to send people to know more about you or Road Angel? Where, where, would you, where would you like to send folks? Let's send folks over to roadangeltv.com. And you can also find us on, you know, on Facebook under The Road Angel. And you can find us on Instagram. And we are a very interactive production team. So please hit us up. We'd love to chat. How fun. Well, beautiful. Well, we're talking today with Danielle Agnew about living with supernatural power. Stick with us because when we come back, we're going to get way down and dirty here, folks. We're going to get into the nitty gritty. I know all of you are sitting there going, well, yeah, that's okay for her, but not my life. And what people say, and I have a mom and da 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 da. Okay, stop. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. So stick with us and we'll be right back. Hello, everyone. This is Tonya Don Reckla, Executive Director of Superpower Experts. And we want to thank each of you for making Superpower Up the number one podcast network for personal development and spiritual growth. Because people like you have the courage to say that mindfulness, healthy living, disrupting reality, the pursuit of consciousness, responsible entrepreneurship, and radical parenting matter. We now amass over 1 million downloads monthly in more than 90 countries. Our numbers keep growing because there are far more people willing to live divergently than mass media wants to acknowledge. For you, the change makers, the light bearers, the way showers, we say thank you. If you're ready to take the next step in your evolution, go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz. And as Neva Lee Rekla, our youngest podcaster, likes to remind us, remember, we all have superpowers and we can change the world. Awesome. We're back. You're listening to the Superpower Up Network. This is Disrupt Reality with me, Tonya Don Reckland. Today we have 
the treat of all treats. We have Danielle Agnew with us, and we're talking about living with supernatural powers. We talked before the break. Um, you know, we were kind of yucking it up a little bit about just the experiences, right? Coming out of the closet, like like being okay with this stuff, like so. And and that's really just the first step, right? Like like we 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 talk a lot of folks off the ledge here, at superpower experts who had an awakening, and and I, I don't know where we picked up this notion, but it's like for some reason, along with this awakening process. Um, it seems that a seed gets planted that the universe somehow owes you an existence because you now have all the secrets to the universe. Now, that's beautiful and it's a great idea. And for some of you, perhaps it's worked out that way. For a lot of us, it's not quite how it worked out because what we immediately saw after we um, we realized that that wasn't going to happen was all of the things that stands between us and the reality that the universe actually has, has, has offered us. Um, it's not something that we naturally just step into because of everything that's been normalized from, as you mentioned, the old world, right? Like, like what got created. And, um, and and we don't have time on this episode to dig into like why all that got created. Although I can sure. tell you that there are divine threads throughout it all. Nothing is on accident to include Trump. So stop getting on the guy's case about stupid things. Um, not that I'm a huge fan, but we asked for change. This is what it looked like. We got it's changed. Like it, it's oh, shaking yeah. shit up, right? Like you yep. don't like it, but this is where we're at. Um, and so it's easier to point fingers and to lay blame and to say, yeah, but, 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 but. Um, and ultimately, those of us who've been at this game for more than a day know that we're only getting back from the projection what's in alignment with what we're broadcasting out. Um, right. And so, you know, it's you folks. If, if, if you're, if, if everything around you looks pretty shitty, you may be the common denominator. And there are ways that you can alter that, right? Like, like, you know, when you're truly being of service, because you kind of float above it, right? You're kind of in the world, but not of it. You kind of can yeah. see things from a different perspective. It's not that the stuff isn't happening. It's that you're not immersed in it anymore. Now, you may have aspects of your physicality that are, you know, like I said, we just went through the plague. Like we're not immune from what's going on in the world, but we also, it, it doesn't necessarily have to beat us down about who we know ourselves to be. I don't feel any less enlightened because I'm coughing, right? Like right. I don't feel right. any less an aspect of the divine because I have a bad day, right? Or I, I, I can't even say that actually in integrity. I don't have bad days. What I get to experience is the friction. Right. And right. then we get to choose what we call it and how we value it and how we package it. And so one of the questions I have for you, Danielle, that I know a lot of folks struggle with is how do you reconcile the seeming contradictions and, and continue to live and be obedient to, to your function and, and, and hold some level of responsibility to that? You know, uh, the first thing I would talk about is the concept of obedience, right? Like what we think that is. And of course, that's such an interesting term. And it has positive connotations and negative connotations. And I might just reframe the concept a touch to be that for me personally, it was more about just relaxing into what was the optimum flow for who I was. And where I found dissonance was when I kept trying to create identities to compartmentalize myself, like I am only the rock star, or I am only the lesbian activist, or I am only this, that's where I encountered horrible friction, like an old space shuttle tearing into the atmosphere and tiles are flying off and the windshield's catching on fire. And when I came out of that dissonance was when I relaxed into the fullness of all of the aspects that I was and stop trying to compartmentalize to define myself. Now that takes a significant amount of willingness to, to equal, at equal points, lose the id or identity of the self. And at the same point to gain the entire identity of the self, which always yes. changes. So yeah, I, I guess, yeah. you know, it's kind of a weird concept, but at the bottom line is that for me, it got to a point where I just couldn't, if I may speak plainly, because we're a podcast here, nobody's going to beat me <laughs> on the air here. You know, I just got to the point where I just got tired of bullshitting myself about the fact that I wasn't hearing things, wasn't seeing things, wasn't being directly asked by these massive nuclear reactors of beings to, if I would be willing to participate, could I be some boots on the ground to go help with these situations? Because angels aren't people. They're never going to be people. We don't die and become an angel, although I love It's a Wonderful Life. 
You know, they're different beings that are temporal who have completely different, uh, uh, well, we are like one-tenth of their duty roster for the day. Let me just tell you that. They have other things they're doing. So for me, the thought of how do I reconcile it, I grew weary of pretending that I was only one portion of myself. And I really grew weary of selling myself on the idea that that compartmentalization kept me safe because that's not true. That's just not true. We think it'll keep us safe if we don't let people know the fullness of who we are, but that's not true. It's exhausting. It, well, it it's uses quite the a, opposite. Yeah, it's exactly. So to live in, in, you know, in an integrity, in a harmonious way for me is to actually, I really had to deal with all of the shame messages that we are enculturated with in America. And I only speak as an American because that's where I'm from. Maybe there's other places in the world that use that as a enculturation and crowd control mechanism as much as we do here in America. You know, I had to really address inside of myself, what what am I ashamed of in me? What am I ashamed people might find out? What am I ashamed? Mm -hmm. And pretty soon I really realized that all these things I was freaked out about, nobody else gave a crap about. It was me. I gave a crap about it. So, you know, when I really got to that point of recognizing that, I've, I've heard, literally heard and felt and experienced uh, communication with angelic beings. That's one of my earliest memories I actually have. So I'm not mm -hmm. sure, quite frankly, what it would be like to live without that as part of my GPS. Yet I can tell you what it was like to live pretending I didn't experience that because I didn't want to be seen as a weirdo or whatever. And I, I would not choose to go back to that position of dissonance again because it was just too hard. Well, and it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. There are consequences, right? And, and it's, you know, it, folks, they call it frequency for a reason. Like the, the more you go into this work and expand out and everything else and start touching um, into the, these expanded spaces, things speed up. And so the rate at which we create speeds up. Like the miraculous happens in a blink of an eye, but so does a shit storm. Like, yeah. And so if you wallow in a lower frequency perspective, for half an hour, an hour, whatever, you're creating the next however many moments of your existence, right? And, it, and it's, it's not punishment. It is how everything works, right? There's a very literal translation yeah. of what we emit. And I, you know, I, I'm so grateful that you're sharing that story. And it reminds me, because I, because I, you know, I'm always like, why me? Like, why, why do I get this? Why did it, you know, because I think that's kind of the secret sauce of all true pioneers is, is this innate, like what starts off as, as, as that self-destructive behavior of self-analysis. Right. And, um, but when we evolve it and we use it and we hone it in the way that it, the gift that it is, um, it becomes a really great secret weapon in the sense of uh, an ability to kind of step back and observe yourself in the midst of it all, because it gets really dangerous when we start thinking that what we see in the projection is, some sort of concrete version of reality, right? It's just as dangerous as thinking that what you see on your Facebook page represents the population of the whole, right? Like there are <laughs> algorithms, right? <laughs> right, um, yep, Facebook yep. did was harness the universal algorithms of broadcast and projection, right? Like right, this is right. how this works. And we're given an opportunity to either perpetuate ridiculousness or to opt out. And when it, I came face to face with it in a really, really palpable, like solid way was when... Um, my husband is, is a channel and we, back in the day, you know, when we were, we were really kind of stepping into some of these spaces together. Um, that was what we did for fun, right? Like, like we'd kind of see you. Okay, oh, sure. And, and we have hours on video of him um, channeling w group of entities that call themselves 56 dimensional beings. And I'm sitting there trying to interview them, right? Well, like in order to do that, you have to really be willing to take a look at what you think is important in the language that you use. And I, and I would ask certain questions and they would just go away. And I'm like, wait, wait, come back, come back. You know, and, and, and I, I had to attune myself to what was important or what mattered in that space. Right. So you talk about right. the angelic realm, like they've got other things going on, but there were concerns. Like they'd say, you know, you could ask us anything. And I'd be like, oh, well, 
you know, and I'd ask like business strategy questions or, and they're like, uh, like not only we don't give a shit, but does it compute, right? It just, <laughs> just doesn't translate, right? It's like, oh, that's hilarious. That's, you know, that's, what a, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's yes. A, that was a real thing and it was super challenging. And I was like, yeah, I, like I had to like, really like it was a, it was a, it was a shit or get off the pot kind of moment of if I want to keep doing this and talking with them, I have to be willing to move into that worldview. And then yes. that was the invitation, right? And and um and it forced me to take a hard look at the things that we think are so incredibly important, and and w- how we categorize that versus like just kind of stepping into these bigger spaces, like you're talking about. And and it was undeniable that that there was conflict there, um, that that what my personhood wanted reassurances about the the spirit aspect of me knew was inconsequential. Right. Like, like That's, whether yes. what our color scheme was for our logo is just choice. Right. It just yeah. creates potentiality. It, it's not really that big of a deal outside of being a vehicle for doing our function, as you say, or the work that we're here to do in the world. And well, so and that's, and, and that's it, it right there. That. You you hit it right on the head is you nailed it just now. It is both. And that's one of the things that I'm so excited about with Road Angel as a television show, because television has been such a copycat medium. Uh, and this is an absolute groundbreaking format in that we have the opportunity to actually show where every single one of us has the potential and is that superhero. Every single one of us is. And maybe I get the Angel Channel, maybe somebody else gets the Motivation Channel, maybe somebody gets the Spiritual Sage Channel. Maybe we get them all. Yet exactly what you're talking about, you know, not getting hung up on the semantics, not, not falling down the rabbit hole and staying there of too much of that fear evaluation of the self. I mean, it's always good to have accountability. In my own life, I've replaced the, the uh, teaching tool of shame. I've replaced it with accountability, reflection, And then alternative action, if that's what's required, you know, because I've learned that that shame vibration, it doesn't help anybody, you know, it's, it's, it's rough. And I think that we're deprogramming ourselves from these funky messages, uh, what, what these angels oftentimes refer to as the old world, um, where now, like you talked about. It me up every time. (laughs) I know, right? The old world. And I'm like, or, or, you know, it's interesting is they talk about the original world, which is synonymous in their language as a new world for us. But in the mm-hmm. angelic language, the, the original design is new to us because we are literally the third iteration of humans. We're the third restart of the human species. They tell me this all the time. We, we, we just, we're the gift that keeps on giving as humans. We've about been wiped out a couple of times and we just keep restarting with the help of a lot of our off-world races and, you know, and of course, those who subscribe to the mother, father, God, and these other things. Yet we're here because I believe we're here for a million reasons. Yet one of the things I get so excited about, and this is what I love talking to you about. I I don't get to have these types of interviews. Uh, I I have wonderful interviews and, and all the folks who interview me are unbelievably dedicated to the messages that they're called to bring through. I love coming on this show because we talk about bedrock issues where everybody has the opportunity to initiate their own superpowers to give away whatever teachers, we can call them fear or shame or hesitation or self-loathing or all these things. They're just teachers. And we have that opportunity to go ahead and say, wow, well, I'd like to usher in some different teachers at this time. Because it's my perception that with with what I've been gifted right now with Road Angel. And I'm referring to Road Angel a lot just because it, it literally is a miracle this show even got made. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's how amazing it is. Um, the producer on this show, Mary Erickson and I, and I'm one of the producers too, work very closely together in, in being very transparent and very actually real and authentic in the docu-series about what it's like to not only harbor, um, messages and have them, but also what it's like to live as a person who, who chooses this work. Cause you know, as well as I do, gal, we don't, we don't have to choose to do anything with our superpowers. We could just say, forget it. I'm going to ignore this and drink a bottle of Jack Daniels and go to bed, you know? 
Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah. Well, and that's, I think that's the hardest thing for people is it's like, you may be uniquely designed to participate in something, but trust me, if not you, somebody else, because yeah. the universe will always plug a void, like always, always, yeah. always, always, always. The only person quote unquote missing out is you yes. because you're keeping yourself out of it. And so there's, there is a cost to our fear folks. And, and I, I really want you to catch something for those of you who are listening like what Danielle's talking about is for sure we have these broad spectrums of abilities and gifts and, and we're multifaceted. It's, you know, the, um, you know, my favorite quote, you know, I contradict myself very, very well. I contradict myself that I can see multitudes, you know, I'm butchering it, but it's, it's the idea of like, yes, yes. And yes, we're all these things. However, for those of you who are spinning in the entrepreneur kind of space, there is a point at which you have to converge here in the physical reality or you don't build anything. You are ineffective yes. if you continue to balk against the physical reality and think it's the devil and you want to go home, then go home. <laughs> go home. Because th there's work here to be done and then it creates friction and it's not always fun and not everybody gets you and it kind of sucks and you have to eat crow and you mess up and you do all these things. But it doesn't change the fact that you're a divine aspect walking the world here as a an apparent human being you get to be all of that we get to screw up and fall down and everything else but get to building folks make a decision start stepping forward and if you're not sure get consulting get advice whatever it takes but there's there is that balance and so yes be in the flow yes all these things but do something with it right like like you, you yeah then you yeah. can't sit back and say oh i'm not la, 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 la. like she's building a show like there's work. You have to have cameras and you have to have money and you have to have people who watch it and you have to have teams. And, you know, so all those things have to happen as well. We didn't, we didn't just manifest a podcast network into existence that now gets right. a million downloads a month. Like we had to work at that. And there were definitely growth <laughs> points along the way, but the universe will always give you what it is you expect to see. And if you're expecting to continue to see shame, and guilt and all those things show up in your life because that's what you're comfortable with and it will always give you an opportunity to see those always 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 it will never end it is a it is a hamster wheel that the best you can do is just choose to opt out and just say no more like I, i'm not gonna do it like i i see you i hear you i appreciate you for the teacher that you've been and yeah. now i'm gonna go i get that i'm not perfect here in this physical reality nor do i expect to be nor am i gonna wait to be well, and bingo, nor am I going to wait to be, this is so, okay, so here is a wonderful illustration of how the universe works, just in my life specifically, okay? So gal, this morning I was having a production meeting with producer Mary Erickson and with production manager Melissa Siana, and it was this, this big production meeting about, you know, our pilot episodes and all of the, the rest of the season, and again, I get directed by these and by these angels to go to certain places to help and so to imagine trying to create a team of people that are on board with this process of just going <laughs> like, with no, universal really. flow <laughs> it's honestly and so that's why i say you know when people i mean any tv show that gets on you know folks work so hard and they work for years and i've been part of many different tv projects that are just beautiful and the bottom line is any TV project is a manifestation and, a, and the divine right timing and miracles and everything comes together at just the right moment. However, for this one to get on, for this one to be made into a show, uh, it, it is way out of my capacity to author that. It's way out of Mary's capacity. It's out of Melissa's capacity. That's something universe wanted happen. And I was, of course, I raised my hand and said, sure, I'll go ahead and do it. And I'll show people what it looks like to translate angels. And I'll show people how it feels. And we will, we will document changes that occur in people's lives when they align with these frequencies that are pure love and pure amazing. And love can be scary. And love can be hardcore. And love can be confrontational. You know, it's not all puffy, fluffy little angel wings with feathers falling down places. So, I mean, the series itself is quite chewy, but the reason I keep talking about it is because it is a perfect example of what happens when we let go at the same time that we are taking right action 
in our own perceived purpose at that time. Mm -hmm. And because you're right, we can't just, I can't just sit there on the top of a mountain and (laughs) eat my worms and say, oh, the universe didn't give me a TV show. I guess I'm not supposed to be a spiritual mentor. (laughs) You know, I mean, I guess I could, but that's, worms are gritty and it just gets weird, you know? And like you said, you know, you guys stood in the gap for a need with these podcasts and the millions of people that download these podcasts with you are people who resonate and are looking for your message. And these angels say to me all the time, Tanya Don, all the time, they're saying, they're always saying to me, they're like, you know, they say things like those who have ears, um, you know, basically, you know, we, we think of the Bible, those who have ears will hear mm-hmm. blah. But they talk about frequencies and how, Tonya, when we're talking about frequencies, we're talking about the willingness that we have to receive. And what Mm. have we been taught, especially in America? We've been taught that if we receive, we're a taker. Uh, The only way we can really receive is if we martyr ourselves and blah. So there's a whole new model that I'm sure you're probably seeing too. I sure am seeing that's coming down to people. Oh, heck yeah. Where like we get are, to have families and happiness and money and like we get to actually be here like and not get crucified or burned at the stake. Like, okay. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and we are being asked to, to receive just because, because it is, it really is our birthright in many ways. And so mm. what I love about your show is that you explain to people not only how to be their own superhero, uh, really, and how, how to be in integrity with that. Uh, but it also, it demystifies it. And that's one of the biggest mm. things with road angel, you know, and I, yep. I technically am quote the road angel, even though I'm not an angel, I'm a person, but you know, going out there to show people, we can demystify the process of coming into grand alignment with the frequencies that light our butts on fire and, and just give us that purpose that everybody wants to feel and really, if we just relax and we say, hey, whatever, let's just rock this thing, then those opportunities present themselves. And I, I, will, Always. I will just shout it from the rooftops. That's why I'm so, I'm in such awe, A-W-E, such awe of this process of being part of this television series. And, mm-hmm. and it's a weird thing, too. I have to tell you this, too. We're, talk, we're being just fully disclosing here. You know, when I have people come up to me and talk to me about the TV show and they're like, wow, this is big. The whole show is about you. You are the star of this show. The whole Mm. show rides on you. How do you feel about that? And I I don't feel anything about that. I recognize it. I have a lot of Mm -hmm. humility and gratitude for it. But I don't feel like the whole show rides on me because it's not about me. It's about the people that we are helping. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, um, it's a concert. I was always in bands. And it's about being in concert with others. And I think, it, at least for me, that's where I found my happy place. It's beautiful. Well, and it, it's so funny as you're talking. I remember one of my favorite interviews of all time that I was on somebody else's show. And every word, every sentence out of my mouth, the host would interrupt me and say, well, what, what she means to say is, and I let it go on for a little while. And then I finally just very gently stepped in and said, well, um, I, I appreciate, you know, you, you, you making sense of my words for me. And explain like it's a, it's a broadcast right our people are one percent of everywhere we have no choice but to be incredibly real and true to our frequency even when it makes other people uncomfortable so folks that means we walk into networking groups we walk into business conferences we walk into events all of us and we speak our words in our way in the way that they are delivered through us because our people need to hear. And that means 99% of the room look at us like we're nuts. And it's okay. <laughs> and it's okay. Because the 1% that needed to hear it and could hear it and, and is ready finds us every time. And that's part of the reason for the podcast. Because we have learned quickly, like, our people just aren't gathering in droves yet. Because there aren't enough of us. Folks, I'm, and the numbers I keep hearing is 1% of the population is having these conversations and less than 5% of that 1% are willing to step up and do this. Those are not big numbers yet, folks. We're not even to the social proof phase, but that's why this is so important. This is why we have to stand up and, and, and it, and it helps, it helps to put that forward, right? Because like Danielle's talking about, it's not about you at all. 
right? And, and it's no. all about you, right? Like that's the yeah. irony. And, and it's like, you can't understand that contradiction if you're still holding on to your perception of security. It just can't happen. And I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a, I'm not a psychic, but I, I'm getting a solid hit that the angels are going to tell you to come to Phoenix. I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird thing. So I'm thinking that that's brewing so that we can just hug on you and love on you and just Aww. in physicality, show you our gratitude for your courage and what you're presenting to the world, because we really do honor you and the path that you're taking and know that you have supporters in um, whatever we can do to contribute to, to road angel, whatever fun projects you can cock next, just know that um, we're here for that because we um, support you and, and we like what you're doing and we appreciate the model that you're presenting to others. Well, thank you. I, I would go to Phoenix just to get a hug. I, I would, I, I would. And it's interesting. I have, as we were talking before the show started, I have some very dear friends. My wife owns a fitness studio and her manager and his husband are moving to Phoenix. And I used to live in Tucson. You know? And I was um, raised in Tucson. Very cool. Oh, oh carne seca, chimichangas. Oh, there you go. Down at, down at, <laughs> oh, El Charo. Um, so, I mean, I would love to go down and experience that desert energy and really, you know, it just feels good to be around kind people who Mm. are beautiful in the spirit and they love, and they just want to hang and be cool. And, and I tell people this all the time, uh, that, you know, it's one of the things where we work in the spiritual field. It's whatever. I, I think of it as actually a spiritual physics field. Mm -hmm. But I'm told often that many people think of it more in a metaphysical field. And I'm I'm not a very metaphysically person. I mean, I'm very, I'm a huge physics nut. I'm a, I'm a pastor. I'm, I'm a very spiritual person. Yet at the same time, when it comes to this work, to me, it's all about real boots on the ground connection with people. It's about Mm -hmm. demystification. It's about, uh, allowing people to that one percent you're talking about, sister. You're not kidding. Um, that one percent, I believe, under the hood of all of these human beings. I think my feeling when I feel into the human race, which I often do, is is that Super it's fun. <laughs> kinda. Yeah. My God, where are we at today, here, people? This news is grim. Um, you know, when I feel into the human race. We have so, I would say it's more like maybe even 35 to 40% feel these impulses to talk about, but they have nowhere to even begin right. to find the words to formulate the thought of this mm. natural feeling they've got in their spirit. So that's why I think that your podcast uh, and, and your, your network, not just this podcast, which is phenomenal, but your network and shows like Road Angel and, and many, many, many other podcasts and shows are part of this opportunity to, again, demystify the process. For sure. For sure. And, and make no mistake about it. The second we call it the abstract frequency, and, and that was the language that was given to me. And it, when the second I got it, right, I saw it, I was there. Like, the biggest surprise to me, folks, was everybody's there. Like, yeah. make no mistake about it. When I say less than 1% are having the conversation, it does not mean people don't get it. They, everybody gets it. Yes. Everybody has the capacity. Everybody knows all of this. It's just a matter of what we're choosing to tune into. That's yes. it. Though yes. This is not a hierarchy. This is not a, I'm greater than everybody else. This is none of that. And I highly encourage all of you to not engage in that behavior, but we get to be in choice about what we choose to listen to, right? And what we're broadcasting. And, and, and there, there's, a, there's a process in that. And you, can, you can be trained in how to hone that. That is, that is the developmental piece of this, folks. However, it does not change the fact that everyone is there. It's oneness for a reason. Nothing is excluded, right? And that's why the demystification is so incredibly important. Nothing can be out of reach. No matter how yes! you value it, label it, anything else. I always joke, I'm like, everybody wants to be Jesus, but nobody wants to walk around teaching sandals. Like, you have to be willing <laughs> to do the outreach. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was fantastic. Yeah, you're right. You, just, you have to. Like, you know, yeah. you've got the road angel, right? You've got to take it to the road. You've got to do yeah. the work, folks. And it is yeah. work. And there are moments when you'd rather pull your fingernails out than talk to one more person about the fact that maybe they have a soul. 
right? I get it. <laughs> yes. But yes. It's important. And somebody did it for you. So do yes. it for somebody else. Yeah. That's absolutely true. That gets a big amen. (laughs) Yes. No. And you know, and no, no, no. And it's an extremely important thing because we have been, it's been my experience. Let's put it to you this way. Um, and I, and I really want to make sure I keep this comment brief because I could go on for years about it. We we could probably go on for years about this, but go on, please. Totally. Um, you know, it's been my observation and I've done this work where I have chosen to actually stand in the gap for these angelic messages and and get in there and translate for it and translate it these massive cubes of information. Angels don't speak linearly like we do. <laughs> they, I was literally describing this to the production team that imagine a three foot by three foot cube, like a crate. And imagine taking a, pe- a, a some blue thread, thread, and beginning to coil it in the very center. And you're making teeny tiny, perfectly tight concentric circles all the way. And you cover and it takes like four spools to cover that three by three floor. Now you're going to start and create another just tight concentric circle spool and tightly spool thread all the way for three feet. That's how angels communicate. And they drop it on my head and I have about, I don't know, a second or so to figure out how do I translate this to a person? Because Mm -hmm. they give you everything. They give you that person's history, their Yep. They're everything yes. about them because, because the one thing that angels don't do is understand why we understand things the way we do. That's one thing that's out of their wheelhouse. So mm-hmm. when you say do the work, sister, and this is if anybody says, well, you know, the show is about you and you and you and what you do. And of course, well, okay, yeah, I'm the talking head on the show. Yeah, got Yet, it. <laughs> you know, sure. But the, the fact of the matter is that my honest contribution, and this is, and this is to your point about choosing to do the work. Okay. Because Tonya, you're right. We have to choose. I I don't have to choose to interpret that information into something a person could understand. I don't have to choose to spend time in the resonation with angels as much as I do to understand their perspective on things. I don't have to choose any of it. Yet if I do, And I pass along, and that is really truly my contribution to the show is the translational aspect of it all. Mm -hmm. Then people have the opportunity to then do the work that is set before them. And I got news for folks. You know, I'm with you, girl, on this one. We do not get to have our ticket punched off the spinning rock here until we go through what we're here to go through. And we, so you just have to start back at in infancy, folks. Like if you're an oh. adult, at least you have so you, you can move around, you can drive. Like, like don't be so quick to write off this experience. Yes. And it's about doing the work. And you know, we think work is a bad thing. So how about we reframe the idea of work? And it's not about it, yes, it's about doing the work. It's about meeting with excitement, the full potential of what the rush becomes when accountability is then the design, which then lays the road or the pathway for all of these fantastic things that you've always wanted in your life. I mean, that's an exciting moment when we realize, oh my God, I am ultimately accountable for it all. And obviously crap happens to good people. People get victimized, awful things happen, and that's a whole other podcast. Yet what you're talking about doing the work and being, making sure that you're just dialing your frequency in, none of it's going to be accidental. And I think the more we empower ourselves to understand that the divine or the flow or the frequency or the universe or mother, father, God, or how anybody looks at it is actually dwelling within our DNA, that we're not separate from that. I mean, that's the real eye opener. And I learn, I learn all the time in this job. I know how much I don't know because I am an angelic channel. I'm like, oh God, I had no idea. Really? Wow. Really? (laughs) Very humbling, right? It's like I tell people it's the most most humble, most powerful existence I've ever experienced. And and it's the rewards are great, folks, but they the the cost is high in the sense that you have to be willing to set down everything you thought you knew about who you are, about how the world works. And but when you do it, it, it's worth it. And, you know, don't miss that piece of it. Um, it is worth it. But I, but I think that those of us who cross over in this way, it's like, 
don't try to shortcut, but it's not going to work. And, and there, there is accountability. Um, there's just natural checks and balances. Like nobody has to do anything to you. It's not like we're sitting here crafting going, ah, ha, ha, ha. like it just happens, right? Because yeah. there are checks and balances in the system. Um, and so anyway, we, we could go on for ages, but I, you know, I, I love the fact that you're willing to step up and be the face. I mean, you're talking to somebody who took three years before I put my picture on the podcast. So it, it, it took a lot. And part of it was the confusion about being in service to the collaboration. Right. Yeah. And so there's a lot, how do you lead and not be what we've typically seen as a leader, right? That, that doesn't always bode well. And so, so there, there's a new way of, of doing all of this and stepping forward. And it just takes courage to step one foot in front of the other. And you will, here's what I can promise you folks. So if you listen and you pay attention and you take a step forward in integrity and say, okay, this is the intention. This is where I'm going. This is how I'm interpreting what you're saying to me. And you take a step forward, the universe will always provide feedback, either affirmation or course correction. This is not a, you get one shot and if you screw up, you're done. Like you just right. keep stepping forward. And as long as you're willing to listen, you will be guided. They'll, they'll, you'll get a nudge to the left or a nudge to the right, or you'll, it'll be a, hey, this is spot on. Like it's smooth, it's easy, keep going. And then you'll get a nudge to the left and then you'll get another nudge to the right. And then it's smooth and easy, keep going. Like you just have to be willing to put a foot in front of the... In, in, in front of the other and listen. And if you do that, you will get guidance. I guarantee it. Just be patient. It may not come exactly how you think or how you want or whatever. Like we're not all going to talk to angels. You've got a different broadcast. Sit in your gap. Be willing to stand there, and you will know what to do. You just have to believe that. Um, but for now, we're going to leave you and and watch Road Angel. There you go. There's all there. There there's the answer to everything. Just go <laughs> listen to our podcast. Watch Road Angel, and that's all you have to do, right? That that's it. That's magic. Uh, but let's right send on. them again. <laughs> let's send them again to RoadAngelTV.com. Go check out the new show. Super exciting. Connect with Danielle. She she's well, you know, Danielle. We we think you're fantastic. So, um, thank well, you thank for coming you. back on the show. I, I love um, communing with you, and I look forward to further developing our relationship. And like I said, just know you have fans here at Superpower Up and um, we're excited for the debut. Well, thank you. And it is so wonderful to reconnect with you. And I'm kind of a fangirl of yours. So that's awesome. Yay! And I think, I think it's so great. I love to, to, to just support everybody doing this incredible work out there. And yeah, gang, if you hit us up at roadangeltv.com, um, also on the Facebook page, the Road Angel and our Instagram account, which just got launched, and we are in production for this series. And so when we can actually officially talk about where it's going to air, you guys will be the first to know over there, sister. Yeah. Um, but we can't say that quite yet because we are still in production. However, um, I just want to thank you for such an intelligent and loving and freaking cool discussion today mm. because this has just been so fun. And just to give you one more big prop here, uh, Tonya, uh, if we you know when we're talking about this, uh, Tosha Silver, of course, is we many of us know who Tosha Silver is in this field, a New York Times bestselling author and just an all around cool lady uh, that talks about transcendent thought and all these things. And I had an opportunity to work with Tosha uh, and it, at a particular conference I was in at Santa Barbara. So I had an opportunity to meet her and really just the coolest down to earth chick, right? And you said something that I'd love to leave folks with today, uh, which was that you said that use your voice because your frequency, your lens, your interpretation is w what's needed. And be, be, have some chutzpah to say that. So I wanted to share the Tosha <laughs> Silver meme that was on Instagram because I follow her on Instagram. And the meme that popped up the other day because I had to go deliver some pretty heavy news. Mm. And I was like, ah. Oh, God, all right, mm -hmm. angels help me with how we're going to, this is going to be heard well, and that's their job is to help me with all that. And this meme comes up, and I'm paraphrasing a tiny bit, but it basically said, if everybody likes you, you're playing it too safe. Be yourself. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's exactly what you said here today. So thank you for being you and really holding a space for everybody in the, the stewardship, which is the new leadership for this time frame, the stewardship of this space, for giving people that. Uh, 
permission. I think that's cool. Thank you. Well, thank you. And and to all of you out there, I know you all are trying your hardest and your best and keep at it. It's worth it. Have the courage. Um, even when it feels like, you know, it, it's thankless or it's not going well, reach out, get, get involved with Danielle's community, get involved with ours, like uh, reach out to Tosha Silver's community, whatever, whatever resonates with you, but be supported in this, be loved in this, be held in this commune with other people who are doing the same thing. They can't walk your walk, but they can certainly walk beside you folks. And we can hold hands and we can love on each other. And it, and it is important work. So, so stay with it and, um, and know that we're here to support you. If you want more support, look into our superpower programs. We are, um, again, we can't walk it for you, but we are always happy to make it a little bit more smooth and at least do it beside you and, and hold you as, as you're walking it. So um, to all of you out there, Thank you for your courage, Danielle. Thank you for yours. And uh, check out The Road Angel when it comes out. And, and we love you all. So take care. Go out, uncover your superpowers, folks, and change the world. Take care, everyone. Are you ready to discover your superpowers? Go now to superpowerexperts.com and take the superpower quiz today.